Three big E's. Our next guest expects election, economy, and earnings will be the main themes in 2020. Kevin Mann, Hennian and Walsh Asset Management CIO and Smart Trust Units Investment Trust CIO joins us now with the latest on the three E's yeah. and also the tale of two cities. But let's start about the E's. Which is the biggest of those E's? Well, well let's start with 2019. 2019 was a year of three big E's as well. Equities exceeding expectations with a total return of 31.5%. Just the fifth time in the last three decades where we saw the S&P exceed 30%. And I do believe there's more upside potential in 2020 as well. Not 31.5%, but that's going to be shaped by, as we pointed out, earnings, the economy, and the election. Let's look at earnings. Thus far, we've seen 68% of companies that are reported in the fourth quarter beat earnings estimates. 64% beat revenue estimates. Looking ahead, we also saw 21% of those S&P 500 companies revised to the upside for the first quarter. We believe earnings will continue to grow in the first and the second quarter, and that will help the U.S. economy grow, remembering that 70% of the economy comes from the consumer. But at the same time, when you look at the economic figures we've gotten as of late, they've continued to be mixed, right? We got the ISM services that was a stronger yep. number. Manufacturing continues to struggle, although that, too, was a little bit better than estimated. We talked to, um, I believe it was Torsten Sock from Deutsche Bank the other day, who said he doesn't think CapEx is going to rebound this year. So, I mean, where does that clarity on the economy, where's that growth in yeah, the economy? All very from? important components, but small components of the overall U.S. economy still driven by the strength of the U.S. consumer. 50-year unemployment low, wages rising about 3% year over year, and we saw from Amazon's earnings just how confident the U.S. consumer is by spending to the extent that they did during the fourth quarter of last year, particularly during the holiday shopping season. If, in fact, 15% of total retail sales now are made up of online commerce, that bodes very well for companies like Amazon and other companies in the e-commerce ecosystem. So suddenly we're being hit by these major exogenous events. Yes. So we have coronavirus, and over the course of this broadcast, we've talked about how coronavirus is affecting a lot of different companies. Um, it's affecting their supply chain. It's affecting demand. Uh, we're seeing it in Yum Brands. We're seeing it in Qualcomm. We're seeing it in all these various places. So that's one exogenous event. Boeing is a major exogenous yep. event because there are lots of supply chains to support the, the, um, the production of that number one plane that they have. So how do all these exogenous events play into that forecast you just laid out for us? Certainly. And obviously my forecast is based upon information we have now. Yep. Uh, we certainly were not aware of the impact of the coronavirus coming into 2020. It looks as though that will have an impact on multinationals. We don't know the extent of the supply chain uh, dimensions right now. but. Looking ahead with a dovish Federal Reserve, with a confident spending consumer, we believe there's still upside potential absent all of those additional risks that we haven't even seen as of yet. We haven't even spoken about the last D. I was just going to ask you. The so election. The election. Yeah, what scenarios pretty... <laughs> are going to support more, more um, gains for the market here and yeah, your, your yeah. target? And, and we all focus on who's going to be in the Oval Office in November. Right, but we have to also Senate. remember yeah. the control uh, of Congress. Yeah. We have a large number of seats up in the Senate a large number of seats up in the House of Representatives, that could shift the whole balance of power. So this is, this is a pretty big and important election. As we get closer and closer to Election Day, we believe investors will sit on their hands, and as a result, we're going to see more intermittent periods of volatility. So it will pay to be defensive in 2020 and also keep an actively managed portfolio strategy to adjust but, to these changes. But simply put, for most investors, the ideal outcome of the election is split government. One party controls the That's White House, the other party controls the That is what history has shown us. Okay, we have to leave it there. <laughs> Kevin Mann, thank you. Uh, and uh, thank you, Ramsey, for being here for the last 90 minutes. And I believe I'm thanking you as well. Yeah, we're sending you back up. Kevin is going to be here with us for the next 90 minutes. Yeah. So that was yeah. just a little taste. Hey, investors. Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.